In America, the law is king. For as in absolute governments the king is law, so in free countries the law ought to be king, and there ought to be no other. Thomas Paine. The rule of law is one of the bedrock principles of our democracy. It means that no one is above the law. Nothing but the truth, so help you God. That no citizen, no public official, no branch of government may act outside the law. How do you plead guilty or not guilty? And that the government must treat everyone equally under the law. The court finds you in contempt. The rule of law safeguards each and every one of us against arbitrary governance. I've heard Justice Sandra Day O'Connor speak several times, and one of the things she has said that has struck me and stayed with me is that more people in our country can name the names of the three stooges than name the three branches of government. Civics classes are uh, few and far between, and uh, they're not certainly not required courses. So yeah, I think because of that, there is, uh, among the, uh, a lot of the public, uh, uh, ignorance about how our system works, the, the different branches of government. And I think everyone needs to appreciate how very important the third branch of government is in preserving liberty and preserving their freedoms. We have an opportunity here to teach, educate, and help our community, particularly the youth, to understand the rule of law, understand how important our democracy is, so that they then can shape our future. And it would be great to have an instructional institution where that could come to life. What better way to do that than to uh, create a bit of a learning center and a museum in an old section of an old building in a jail. In its current state, this historic county jail is a ghostly place. Years of neglect have taken their toll, but if you look closely, you will find the historic value in this cell block. It is here that some of Arizona's most famous and notorious defendants awaited trial. The verdicts shaped not only their lives, but in some cases, they shaped the laws of our state and our nation. The Old County Jail first opened in October of 1929. It occupied the top two floors of the old Maricopa County Courthouse. The courthouse was built through the collaborative efforts of Maricopa County and the city of Phoenix for $1.5 million. The floors below the jail housed both the county courthouse and Phoenix City Hall. Back then, the population of Maricopa County was about 150,000. The Superior Court had only three judges to hear about 3,300 cases a year. And in many instances, the old courthouse has uh, stories to tell about notorious cases. One of those notorious cases certainly was Ernesto Miranda. It resulted in the Miranda warnings that are given thousands of times a day. Many notable attorneys and judges have come from Maricopa County. Hazel B. Daniels who was the first African-American to pass the bar exam in Arizona and led the fight against segregation in our public school system. Attorney John Frank and John Flynn represented Ernesto Miranda. And there was Lorna Lockwood, who was the very first woman appointed in any state Supreme Court, and she was Chief Justice. In addition, of course, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor who was the first woman appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court. So we have many notable people who have come from Arizona, who have formed the legal history, not just for Arizona, but the nation. By the early 1960s, our valley outgrew the old courthouse and jail. The county built the Madison Street Jail and several court facilities to manage the burgeoning population. And, Although hard to see from the exterior, the old courthouse began to fall into disrepair. Fortunately, a county bond election in the late 1980s provided the funding needed for a multi-million dollar renovation project, and much of the facility was restored to its original splendor. And in fact, when uh, the dedication occurred, Sandra Day O'Connor came 
and help dedicate the old courthouse uh, because her first chambers were in the basement of the old courthouse. Today, the facility continues to play an active role in the Superior Court system, housing several divisions, including the probate courts and the probate registrar's office. Who are all the people in the courtroom? That's an excellent question. For years, Maricopa County Superior Court has introduced tens of thousands of students to the legal system through its courthouse experience. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Drug Court. Still, there is no place where those students and county citizens alike can go to learn about the history of our county's judicial system. You are facing a longer jail term. Those of us that have been involved in the legal community for some time uh, look at the old jail and we have great nostalgia for it. Uh, we look at the sixth floor of the old courthouse. Uh, there's great history there. There's great history in the entire building. It would be terrific if when we get requests from the public, uh, from student groups, if they would have a place that they can come in and get a sense of, of the jail, of what their constitutional rights are, some of the history in the county, and to be able to learn in the justice system and how important it is to their lives. The goals of the Learning Center and Museum are to gather and preserve historical memorabilia and documents, to create a central repository for that legal history, and most importantly, to educate the public about the importance of the rule of law in an organized society. Using a courthouse and using a courthouse facility and the old jail facilities is absolutely unique. I really want people to understand what a gem we have what a potential we have for a great museum. And also, uh, we have the opportunity to set a, perhaps a, a pattern or a vision for a number of other courthouses across the country. The museum already has been designated as a Centennial 2012 Legacy Project by the Arizona Historical Advisory Commission, meaning it will be part of a larger historical ensemble. The hope is to have it up and running in 2012. And uh, wouldn't it be wonderful to uh, celebrate not only all of the great things about Arizona, but to celebrate the justice system in Arizona. Arizona has an extremely rich legal history, and we need to share that with our future generations. We need to tell them this story, because if we don't, who will?